Hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to be drawing fire. So I thought I'd grab this little snippet of footage that I pulled out of my phone from the last time I was visiting with my family. And we were going through a lot at the time, but we were just kind of sitting around the fire telling stories. And I had to get them to shut up long enough that I could get a couple seconds of footage without everybody yammering in the background. So little bit of fire for you to enjoy before I start drawing some fire and I hope you will enjoy this little piece of art. In my previous video I introduced you to the warm and cozy wishes class and the two images that are in it the owl and the girl walking up with firewood. And I kind of told you a little bit about my thoughts about her and figured I better just get this out of my head and put it on paper. So I printed her a little larger than what would be on that card and wanted to create a bonfire for her to walk up to. It took quite a bit of research trying to find pictures of people around bonfires, bonfires in different settings, and you know they look different when they're at dusk versus when it's dark dark and I wanted dark dark and it was yeah the internet is a, a good place sometimes to find things and then other times it has nothing that you need but I was kind of struck with the fact that everything goes red right around the fire in many many circumstances so that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to make it everything very, very red. But the fire is coming first because I want to make sure I reserve all of that. So I'm using rust colors and yellows and oranges to start to create that upward swell of all of that fire, all that flame. And in the small clip that you saw in the first section of the video, that was just a very small fire pit at my sister's house. Whereas I wanted something that was going to feel much bigger and taller and kind of go up into the sky, that sort of thing, as she's walking up to it. But how do you apply color to that? What is going to be seen? Now, I've done night scenes before and I've talked about that. When you're looking at something at night, just go out in your yard tonight and look around and see how little color is actually there. And that's when you don't have a bonfire. And, you know, it's just dark. It's maybe you see a hint of blues or greens, but most of it is blacks and grays because there's not a lot of light shining on it. Now, if you're right by a window, you're going to catch a lot of light on the subject and you might start seeing the actual color of the subject. But you're going to see it generally modified in some way, depending on how much light there is. In something like this, there's really not going to be a lot of white light thrown onto whatever's around it. And as I was looking for reference material and just like, just looking up bonfire pictures, everybody is red right around the bonfire. And it can be really eerie, but it also feels really warm. So I, I altered it a little bit. Instead of having just reds, I pulled some yellows in so that I feel a little happier rather than all devilish and weird but shadows would drop off really quickly. You would end up with just a slight highlight around the edge of any faces that were sitting right next to it. And then looking at something further in the distance, how, how does a scene look as you're, you know, as it's in the background of whatever the bonfire is. Now, most people seem to take pictures of bonfires, either when it's pitch black and there's nothing else around, so they get just the bonfire, and you know maybe a little bit of sky behind it if they're on the side of a lake or they end up getting for the most part just black around it and so locating anything that had the kind of thing I was looking for was not easy but I did the best I could kind of trying to fumble my way through it by adding layers and layers of color knowing that there's going to be more of that red and yellow as she's getting closer to the fire, the ground I wanted to be red because some of the, the references that I saw that were very red on the ground were what I was feeling like that. That was what I was going to try to capture. Now, Olo Marker has 
these colors that are red grays. And I thought I'd make use of those in this because red grays are a little redder than a warm gray and they have a bit of a range in them. So I thought, well, this is a great time to break them on out. Now I was gonna be putting a scene in here, but I wanted to set her as the main thing. I didn't want to do the whole scene and then add her color and then have to try to figure out what to match. I wanted the background to then be able to deal with what I already had down. So the regular background is done in regular blacks, whereas she's got more in the, the red blacks and the red grays. And I was just kind of toying with it. I wanted trees and things behind her, which are similar to the scene that I created in the warm and cozy class. But that one was just really simple, just a, you know, a stand of trees in the background with some shapes. This is like taking that same idea and pushing the heck out of it until it's almost unrecognizable. So a lot of it was just me imagining what this might look like because I think the reason no one takes pictures like what I was looking for is because you should not have a bonfire that close to trees. And it occurred to me as I was working on this, I'm like, I had to figure out a way to push those trees further back than what they were because right now they look like she's just barely coming out of them you know some of that dark almost looks like her shadow on it so I was gonna have to work with that because I didn't want to burn the whole thing down after you know getting my whole sketch done here but just playing around with lines and shapes and since I'm in Inktober and I've been doing a lot of really strong blacks especially since I was playing with those brush pens this was an extension of that but just doing it with a bit of color as well which is a lot of fun you know I, I find anything where I'm exploring and discovering something new is really fun and looking at what the light would do in a situation like this and how to control how dark it is how light it is how red it is and then trying to get those edges around the fire at the same time and create something that felt not eerie and devilish, but would just feel beautiful and warm, like you wanted to go sit by that fire. As soon as she gets that wood in there, you know it's gonna roar nicely and it's gonna be wonderful. So trying trying to create all of that at the same time was, uh, was not really all that easy. This has nothing to do with the prompt for the day for Inktober, by the way. It's just an experiment I wanted to do after having created this image for the class. Now the class is a level two class. So if you're watching this and you're like, oh my God, I could never do this. This is not in the class. This is advanced beyond that. And you can watch my previous video to kind of get the lay of the land on that or just go to the link in the doobly-doo and go watch the video that's on that page because it shows you exactly what's in class. And I tell you, like all you have to do is be able to draw rectangles. That's it. You don't have to draw fire. You don't have to do any of this craziness. Just simple rectangles. That class, like this, is in real time. So you get to watch all of it. And I'll talk you through everything, that sort of thing. But uh, this is just kind of crazy stuff that jumped in my head that had to come out on paper. Because I just, I wanted her to have a bonfire. And in the, the class, the scene that we draw is her walking up to the cabin in the snow and, and, you know, bringing her wood to the cabin. And I wanted her to be able to hang out outside by a bonfire because, you know, if it's not too cold, and maybe sometimes even if it is too cold, it's, it's kind of nice to be by a bonfire when, uh, when the weather's chilly. I would kind of like a little fire in my backyard myself. But I have dogs, and that does not go well with dogs. So I do plan on, hopefully I've done it already this week, I'm filming this a week ahead of time, but um, my hope is that by the time you're watching this, I will have called the guy to come and clean my chimney, because I miss having fires, but I haven't had my chimney cleaned in so long that I think it's unsafe to do that. So. I am going to make sure somebody professional comes and takes care of it. So for the ground, right around the fire, it's going to be um, lighter color and more reddish. And then as you get further away from the fire, it's going to get dark and shadowed. And in 
you know, like my mind's eye for this to keep her safe, we're going to have her in rocks. So I ended up, you know, putting a lot of scrubby stuff down here. I started with a black in the corner and then I made the rock uh, not the rocks I guess the rocks around the bonfire maybe some of that is a little bit of wood as well but making that really dark and then starting to add more desaturated colors around the the ground area and then I used the Copic uh, multi-liner brush pen that I drew this image with in the first place in the last video because you know brush pens are kind of fun you can get different kinds of lines and I was able to just do some doodling so I'm hoping this counts for Inktober even if it's not technically having anything to do with the prompt for Inktober but I think it, the whole idea with Inktober is not to do the prompts or even to do anything you know do all of the stuff every day but just do more than you usually do. And for me, it's hard to do more than I usually do because I usually do art every day anyway. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, I was trying to figure out how to finish this off and I wasn't really sure. So I decided to at least make it a tidier rectangle. That's when I started realizing maybe I needed a little more red in here just to pull that forest into the red. And that actually in a weird way seemed to push it backward a little bit because I needed it a little further back. And hopefully she's got like big buckets of water off the uh, off camera outside the picture here so that she's going to be able to put the fire out if anything sparks and causes any trouble because I didn't do her any favors by making her quite so close to the forest that she had gone and pulled all this wood from. I also don't know how she got this nicely chopped wood from the forest. I didn't really work that out at all so you know maybe there's a, a magical elf back there who's chopping wood and the elves might be the ones who actually come to the rescue if there's any fires that she starts by being too close to the uh, forest when she's having her little bonfire and hopefully she has friends out there too who are going to help her to take care of things and be safe out there in the world with her fire so that's my crazy drawing if you're interested in coloring her in a much simpler way, then you can check out the Warm and Cozy Wishes class. Link is in the doobly-doo for that. And the, that class is actually demonstrated in Ohuhu markers, but the Copic and Olo equivalents are listed in the class. So you can use any brand of alcohol markers that you want. And it's a level two, so it's for newbies. All right, I will talk to you guys later. Have a great weekend and we'll see you on the flip side. Bye-bye.